What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we are looking at plant protein versus animal protein and its effects on preventing sarcopenia, muscle mass in young and elderly. But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment, follow that algorithm. Now before we talk about this, let's talk about what sarcopenia is. So sarcopenia is the progressive loss of muscle mass throughout later adulthood. About age 40, until you die, you start progressively losing muscle mass, unless you do things to try and prevent that decline, like resistance training and eating a high protein diet. And the loss of muscle mass, I, I think it's something like 3% per decade or, or something like that. I could have the absolute numbers wrong, but it's, it's, a, it's a noticeable decline and it affects quality of life, it affects longevity, and people who are stronger and have more muscle mass as they age, live longer, have less disease and better overall quality of life. So sarcopenia is something we want to prevent and eating a high protein diet is one of the things that can help prevent that along with resistance training. So this study was looking at randomized control trials comparing plant protein with animal protein for muscle health. Now the studies had to be at least four weeks in duration. And the reason is that's you need at least four weeks to show changes in lean mass. And they had to be in people who had no like present disease to start with and they had to be same amount of protein or similar amount of protein. They had to be within five grams of protein for the treatments for plant and animal. And they had to be isochloric. So they'd be same total calories. So I really like the inclusion criteria here because if you're comparing obviously like a certain protein source at 30 grams versus another source at 15 grams, it's not a valid comparison because you're not isonitrogenous and you're not isochloric. What did they find? Between young and old across those demographics, they saw better results with the animal protein. So they saw a little bit better increase in muscle mass or muscle retention with the animal protein versus the plant protein. Now I wanna point out, it was not a massive difference. It was pretty similar. And these were with non-soy plant proteins. So isolated soy protein, not like soybeans, but isolated soy protein, appears to be very minimal difference from animal protein in terms of actual muscle building. And that is not surprising because Soy has a relatively similar leucine content to sources of animal protein of around 8%, and its PDCOS or protein digestibility corrected amino acid score is 1.0, which basically means it is a quote unquote ideal protein based on its essential amino acid breakdown. So amongst non-soy proteins, they were a little bit worse for building and maintaining muscle. Now that being said, some people may overinterpret this as Oh man, you gotta have animal protein. Animal protein is a great source of protein because it's usually typically more bioavailable than plant protein, especially intact plant protein. Isolated sources of protein, different. So if you're looking at say a food source like beef, chicken, eggs, those are gonna be much more bioavailable than most intact plant sources because in intact plant sources like soybean, legumes, the protein is bound up in the fibrous material of the plant. And that fibrous material, especially the insoluble fiber, like cellulose and hemicellulose, can make part of that protein inaccessible to digestive enzymes. And so it's not bioavailable. Isolated sources of plant protein kind of get around this, but most of them still are not ideal because they're limiting in certain amino acids. Now you can do blends of different plant proteins which can also get around this and some blends will get you to that kind of perfect PDCOS score. So can you build the same amount of muscle with a plant-based diet as an animal-based diet? Yes, yes you can. You probably are just gonna have to do a bit more leg work in terms of if you're only using intact sources of plant protein, it's going to be more difficult. One, because you're going to have to eat more total protein to get the same amount of bioavailable protein, and the amino acid composition is not as good. So you're going to have to eat more because of that as well. If you're using isolated sources of plant protein, like a soy protein, then you can do it relatively easily with a few servings of that on top of your normal diet. But again, if you're consuming animal sources of protein, it makes it easier. At low protein intakes, this stuff becomes much more important, like from 0.8 to 1.2 grams per kilogram of body weight, your quality of protein source is very important. And this becomes very important in elderly who tend to eat less protein. So they get more bang for their buck with animal protein. But in younger people or people eating a higher protein diet above like 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight, protein quality becomes progressively less important because you're eating enough total protein that you're getting enough essential amino acids in. So at, again, at low protein intakes, protein quality, way more important. We showed this in my PhD research that was published in the Journal of Nutrition. But 
as you get higher in protein and total protein at a certain point, plant becomes as good as animal protein because you're just consuming so much overall protein. So again, the results of the study don't surprise me. It doesn't surprise me that animal protein was slightly better because again, at lower protein intakes or modest pro protein intakes, animal protein is more bioavailable and has a better amino acid score. So that being said, it wasn't a huge difference and you can still build muscle with plant protein. You just gotta be a little bit more targeted with how you do things. I'm sure carnivores will hate me for this video and I'm sure vegan zealots will hate me for this video, but the data don't lie. If you guys are interested in a high quality source of protein, my company, Outwork Nutrition, sells a whey protein isolate that tastes good, very high quality, and very affordable. You do not have to use whey protein to get results. I'm not gonna sell you that whey protein is somehow magic, but it is very high in leucine, which is the amino acid responsible for the anabolic effects of protein. It's very digestible, almost 100% bioavailable, and it tastes good, reasonably priced. So if you're interested in that, you can click the link in the description, and I will catch you guys next week.